اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session we are going to talk about evaluating structural model predictive power that is step 4 of our structural model assessment Now as part of the structural model assessment we have had a look at collinearity issues how to assess collinearity we did look into how to assess the significance and relevance of structural model relationship we did assess the model explanatory power and finally now we are going to assess the model's predictive power Now many researchers interpret the R square statistic as a measure of their model's predictive power. This interpretation is not entirely correct. However, since R square only indicates the model's in-sample explanatory power, in-sample here refers to the data that you have, and out-of-sample to the data that you do not have but want to forecast or estimate. So R square has got the capability to explain or provide explanatory power with respect to the sample that you have. However, you cannot estimate the sample that you do not have. That is out of sample prediction is not possible. It also says nothing about model predictive power. That is referred to as out of sample predictive power which indicates a model's ability to predict new or future observations. so you cannot predict new and future observations based on r square now the question remains does the model has good predictive quality because at the end of the day we are using these techniques for prediction addressing this concern shumeli and others in 2016 introduced pls predict that is a procedure for out of sample prediction Execution of PLS predict involves estimating the model on a training sample and evaluating its predictive performance on a holdout sample. Now your whole data set is actually divided into two subsamples. One is your training sample, you can call it sample 1, and the other one is your holdout sample that is your held out sample that is called sample 2. Note that the holdout sample is actually separated from the total sample before execution of initial analysis on the training sample. So it includes data that were not used in the model estimation. So initially the estimation is based on training sample. Now researchers need to make sure that the training sample for each fold meets the minimum sample size guidelines. So although you are dividing your sample into training and holdout sample, your estimation in order to be correct the training sample has to have met the minimum sample size guidelines and for that you can see the following inverse square root method and that link will be shared in the description now execution of pls predict involves estimating the model on training sample so your estimation is done on training sample and evaluating its predictive performance on the holdout sample so your estimation done on training sample is then used to predict your holdout sample note that the holdout sample is actually separated from the total sample before executing the initial analysis on the training sample so your training sample is removed from your holdout sample now there are five folds here and pls predict executes k fold cross validation a fold is a subgroup of the total sample so here is fold 1 fold 2 fold 3 fold 4 fold 5 that is the total data set is randomly split into k equally sized subsets of data so your sample is divided into subsets of data now for example let's say we've got five folds here k is equal to 5 normally 10 is recommended Now in this case each fold is divided into holdout and training sample. Let's say we've got a sample size of 100. Now if that is divided into one, two, three, four training and one holdout sample, so there will be 20 here, 20 here, 20 here, 20 here, and 20 here. Now this here is your holdout sample. and this here is your training sample so your estimation is done on training sample and based on that estimation 
your holdout of sam holdout sample is predicted. Now this is for fold one. Now in fold two, what happens is in fold one, let's say this was your holdout sample. In fold two, this will become your holdout sample, and the same estimation will be run again. In fold three, this will be your holdout sample, and the estimation will be done again. And similarly for the next two sub samples. Now moving on. PLS predict then combines k minus one subsets, that is four groups of data here, training, 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 these four groups combined into a single training sample that is used to predict this particular fifth holdout sample, as we described just earlier. Holdout sample is predicted based on the training sample. Each case in every holdout sample has a predicted value estimated with the respective training sample. So your holdout sample predicted based on training sample, your holdout sample pre predicted based on the rest of the sample. Again, your holdout sample keeps changing unless or until you do for all the folds. Now a training sample is a portion of the overall data set used to estimate the model parameters. That is the path coefficient, indicator weights and loadings. The remaining part of the data set that is not used for model estimation is your holdout sample. And the training data set is used to estimate, that is train the weights and parts of our model. And then we use these estimated weights to predict the outcomes in your holdout sample. So in short, your training sample here predicts your holdout sample for each of the folds. And then we evaluate our prediction matrices based on whatever analysis has been done. And there are multiple ways to do this prediction. We do not compare predictions of training and holdout samples. And finally, the K10 is recommended. Now we are going to look into this. This is by default 10 in Smart PLS. Now the generation of K subsets of the data is a random process and can therefore result in extreme partitions that potentially lead to abnormal solution. Now to avoid such abnormal solution, researchers should run PLS predict multiple times. Now to assess a model's predictive power, researchers can draw on several prediction statistics that quantify the amount of prediction error in the indicators of a particular endogenous construct. So you are look into the error or prediction error of the endogenous construct. Error in here is not an error as in mistake. It is a residual. The lower it is, the better. This is the difference between your actual values and the predicted values. And you want your error to be minimized. You want your values, that is your actual values, closer to the predicted values. Now the most popular metric to quantify the degree of prediction error, how do you assess the degree of prediction error? You use this particular metric, root mean square error. Now another one is MAE, mean absolute error. Now which one to use? In most instances, a researcher should use RMSE. But if your prediction error distribution is highly non-symmetric, that is, there is a long left or right tail in the distribution of prediction error for the endogenous variables, then you are going to use MAE. Smart PLS will provide you the graphs for it. Now to assess the degree of prediction error, use RMSE unless the prediction error distribution is highly non-symmetric. In this case, the MAE is more appropriate prediction statistic. Now to interpret these matrices, Researchers need to compare indicators RMSE or MAE based on the prediction error with the naive linear regression model. Now what you do is you compare these values here with your linear regression results. So what if you used this model and tested it based on linear regression and then you tested it based on PLS? Is there any difference? Now your prediction error should be minimum when you are using PLS instead of using linear regression model. So a higher error in linear regression model and lower error in RMSE would mean that you've got high predicted power. Now the linear model that is linear regression model benchmark values are obtained by running a linear regression of each dependent construct indicators on the indicators of the exogenous construct in the PLS path model. So what happens is you are simply running 
a simple linear regression model whereby you are assessing the impact of the exogenous constructs in the PLS path model that is the indicators of the exogenous constructs on the dependent constructs indicators and then you compare the RMSC values with the LM values and these are the guidelines that we are going to use. Now when all the indicators in the PLS SCM analysis have low RMSE or MAE value compared to the naive LM benchmark, the model has high predictive power. Now if the majority or the same number of indicators in PLS SCM analysis yields smaller prediction errors, not all but majority, then you've got medium predictive power. Now if minority of the constructs indicators produce lower SCM errors, compared to the naive LM benchmark, this indicates low predictive power. But when PLSSEM analysis yields low prediction power, that is RMSE for none of the indicators, that is the prediction error is higher in RMSE or MAE in comparison to the linear model, then you've got no predictive power. Now, how do we do this in Smart PLS? So let's quickly go through Smart PLS. Here is my model that we've been working on all along. So what you do is go to calculate, PLS predict, and look at this number of holes 10, number of repetitions 10. That's fine, keep it to default path, and let's start. Now you won't get any graphical output, so you just have to go to report. Now here are your results for all the endogenous variables, POS was endogenous, OC and others. But before we get on to this one or whether we want to find out which one to compare this one with this one or this one with this one. So what we are going to do is we are going to come here. PLS SCM error histogram. That is manifest variables, your indicators and their histogram. Look at the endogenous variables. Here are your endogenous variables. So look at this. Well, it's symmetrical. Not two extreme values here, not two extreme values here. It looks fine. There is no long left or right tail. So it's it's not, there are no extreme values like at this, but there is a tail. Yeah, it's a left tailed. Look at this, this looks fine. So I guess, yes, we can go for RMSE because your endogenous variables, the residual error looks symmetric. Not two extreme left and right tail values. So let's use RMSE. So let's go to our report here, back up. And we are going to use MV prediction summary. Now we are going to use RMSE. So look at this one. This column here, RMSE, will be compared to this column here, LM RMSE. Now if we had problem here, like if we had long left or right tail in the distribution of prediction, then we would have gone for MAE. But in this case, this is this looks fine. So we are going to come to manifest variables. So let's have a look here. This looks good. So if we compare, this is low, this is low, 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 higher, 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 higher in comparison to these values here. 1.405, 1.414. So this is low, low, low. Look at the values here. So we've got in total five and then 813. 13 and 19 and 19 and 5, 24. So we've got 24 indicators and out of 24, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So out of 24, 13 have got higher RMSE in comparison to LM RMSE. So this means here, yeah, according to the guidelines, we can say that our model has low predictive power. It's almost equal, but still 13 of these indicators, if I'm not wrong, I do not want to count again, have got higher RMSE values in comparison to LM RMSE. So your model has got low predictive power. So this is how you can use your PLS predict to assess your model's predictive part, but the Q square is good. All values are greater than zero and their values, look at this, 
they are moderate to substantial. We've done Q square in one of the last sessions, so you can come go back to it and look at the values. Now, this is how you can compare or utilize PLS predict to assess the model's predictive power. If your error is does not have long left and right tails, use RMSE. Otherwise, you will use MAE. And what you have to do is just simply compare RMSE values with LMRMSE. Or otherwise, what you can do is let's copy it to Excel. Open Excel. Let's paste it. And I do not need this. Let's delete it. And let's delete it as well. So here are your results in Excel. The first thing is just remove these latent variables. We do not need these. And now what we need to do is let's look at the difference. So a higher value here would mean that we do not have any issues. And this is what we are looking for. We want high values here, but we want low values here because we want low prediction errors. So let's is equal to this minus this cell here would mean that you've got a higher value here if there is a negative sign. So look at this. There is a negative sign. This value is higher than this. Let's extend the formula. Here it is. Now go to conditional formatting and look at this less than zero. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So out of 24, we've got 10 indicators where PLS SCM RMSE is less than LM RMSE. So here LM RMSE is higher, higher, higher. Look at this high, high, high. But the problem is most of the times your RMSE values are higher. Okay, it's zero. We can keep that at the separated. Look at this. This is high, high. This is value is high. This value is high. Again, these two values are higher. These two values are higher. So even if we remove these zeros here, two zeros, and add it to the 10 values here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 12 out of 24, 12 values here are higher. So this means that you can say you have a moderate le level of predictive power. Again, the simple formula, the first step, look at your histograms, the left and right tail, just to make sure that you are going to use RMSE or MAE for comparison. Once you are through this, just come here and compare, compare either PLS MAE with LMMAE or PLS SCM RMSE with LMRMSE. Now these values here, I want these values to be lower in comparison to these values. Now, the easier way is again, as I've done, I put it in Excel and did the comparison. You can also count it. Let's say how many values is equal to count if and the range is E2 to E25 and the criteria is how many values are less than zero. So those values that are less than zero mean that your PLS SCM RMSE is lower. So those values less than zero, let's add a zero as well. Okay. So those values that are less than or equal to zero. This means your PLS SCM RMSE is better. So let's press enter and 12 values. So out of 24, 12 values have got lower RMSE and 12 values have got RMSE higher for LM. But again, we have used zero as well to give our model in PLS SCM a better chance to show predictive power. In this case, we can say we can have a moderate level of predictive power. I hope this session would have helped you understand the PLS predict in Smart PLS 4. Thank you very much.